prop walk. Do you know what it is? Do you want to know how it affects your boat steerage? And how do you counteract it in order to improve your boat steerage? Join me and find out. Not all boats are created equal and that applies even to single engine boats as some boats are affected more than others by the prop walk. This is mainly because of hull design, where the propeller is in relation to the rudder and other mitigating factors, but I will go into that later. Prop walk occurs when the propeller and shaft are not perfectly parallel with the water surface. Most boats, um, single engine boats, have a propeller shaft that comes out at an angle. This downward angle results in the cylindrical distance travelled by the propeller blades on the upstroke to be greater than on the downstroke. The upstroke pushes more water, generating more thrust uh, on that side. This combined with the lateral deflection of the boat hull pushes the boat stern sideways and pivoting the boat around a point about one third of the boat length after the beam. This is generally in the vicinity of the main mast. Introducing Wave Dancer the model, brought to you by the powers of Blue Peter, paper, breakfast cereal box and straws and cell tape. For the purpose of this discussion today I will be using the example of a right-handed propeller boat because right-handed propellers are the most common type in use. So if you have a left-handed propeller just do the opposite of the instructions given. In order to maneuver your boat effectively it is important that you know whether your boat is a left or right-handed propeller. In order to find this out there are a number of ways. One of them is if you are in the yard, dried out, um, have a look at your actual propeller and you will find it is stamped on a propeller blade um, just where it attaches onto the shaft. It will either say RH or LH and it will also give you numbers which are your uh, diameter and pitch. You can also tell by looking at the propeller by looking at the tilt of the leading edge of the propeller as to whether it's a left or right handed prop. Most used way of finding out if you have a left or right handed propeller is when you are tied up to a pontoon, put your engine into reverse and find out which side of the boat the prop wash comes out. Prop wash is caused by the turbulence, the water thrust uh, hitting off the rudder. And depending on which way your propeller blades throw the water, will determine which side is your prop wash coming out on. So if you look out, you will find either the prop wash coming from your port or your starboard side. Using our lovely model, um, if we notice when we are doing our test for uh, finding out if we have a right or left-handed prop, and we notice that the prop wash is coming out to the starboard side. That means that the prop walk is to the port side. So the rear or the stern of the boat will pull this way and your bow will sway to starboard. This means that you have a right-handed prop. Conversely, 
if the prop wash is seen coming from the port hand side, the, the prop walk will pull the stern of the boat to starboard and your bow sway will be to port. Understanding how your boat maneuvers in reverse is extremely important. If the alongside um, pontoon check appears to be inconclusive, the other way you can check it is when you get out in the open water, pop her in reverse and check to see which way the boat swings. Um, your bow will sway to starboard and your stern to port or vice versa. If the boat is in the water and you can manage to see your propeller from astern, when your engine is in forward gear, the propeller spins to the clockwise direction, which means it is a right-handed propeller. And if it spins in the anti-clockwise position, it is a left-handed propeller. Knowing which way your propeller turns affects your steerage. And if you are in a tight maneuvering position with a right-handed prop, your engine will always um, steer to uh, starboard or clockwise. Knowing which direction your boat um, works best in is to your advantage. Wind and current are also uh, factors that affect steerage weight and should be taken into account when reversing out of your dock or doing any maneuvers in close quarters. Knowing what type of propeller you have allows better choices for what type of pontoon you want to ask for when you are coming into a marina. If you have a right-handed prop you want your propeller to be port side too. If you have a left-handed prop you want your pontoon to be starboard side too. This will make your life a lot easier. So you come into the marina spot and you realize whilst you've been out sailing, somebody has taken your place. So you realize you have to reverse out. In order to do this, turn your bow to offset your prop walk. In this case, because it's a right-handed prop, the stern would be coming to, um, to port. So we pull our bow to port and then reverse, and that swings our, our stern around. And then we give ourselves a quick burst of forward and let the boat momentum swing us around. And then we can motor out. The other alternative, if you know that you may or may not have space in a cul-de-sac uh, pontoon, is whilst you are outside the fairway, is reverse where you have loads of space to maneuver and get yourself under steerage way before you even come into the fairway. Then you can reverse down and then nope no spaces and come straight back out and move on to the next leg of pontoons if you need to if you need to maneuver your boat quickly in a circle um, always turn a right-handed prop to starboard uh, rotating clockwise your wheel will be hard over to starboard, or in our case, we have a tiller, so we have to push that to port. And then a sharp two second forward throttle and the prop wash hits the tilted rudder and begins to turn the boat. When coming into dock, aim your boat um, bow one third of the distance away from where your bow should finally end up. Traveling at about one and a half um, one to one and a half knots and about a 30 to 40 degree angle 
and when your bow is about a quarter of the boat length away, turn hard from the dock and simultaneously shift into reverse throttle hard enough that it stops your forward momentum um, and then throttle down into neutral and the, the uh, cocked or tilted rudder will swing the bow out whilst the boat is still moving forward and then the prop walk kicks the stern in towards the dock and the vessel will come alongside. Some boats require the helm to be held in centre when reversing as the rudder can act as a brake um, and not allow the boat to gain sufficient uh, steerage quickly enough. If your boat has stubborn prop walk, this can be overcome by a quick burst of speed in reverse. Uh, then pop back into neutral. And this allows the boat enough momentum to provide steerage without being overcome by prop walk. When it comes to uh, prop walk, not all boats are created equal. Um, prop walk does not affect twin engined boats because um, the propellers on a twin engine boat spins in opposite directions to each other and cancels out the effect of prop walk. If both uh, engines spun in the same direction, you would be going around in circles. Um, <laughs> not a good idea when you want to go forward. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Um, not all boats are created equal and prop walk effects are different on different types of boats. Um, and also, the various conditions that you are traveling through can also affect um, prop walk. Different factors um, provide for stronger or weaker prop walk on your boat. A three bladed um, propeller provides more prop walk because the greater push of water over the blades uh, by comparison to a two-bladed propeller and then of course uh, the wing or feathering um, propeller has pretty much no prop walk or a negligible amount anyway. Boats with sail drives are least affected by uh, prop walk because their propeller are parallel to the water surface. The hull shape and clearance between the hull and propeller also has an impact. Clearance between the propeller and the rudder um, also affects the amount of prop walk a boat may have. Um, other things that will affect prop walk is the depth of water that you are going through. If you are on a shoal boat, for example, um, there's less water under the keel and as a result of being in shallower water, there's less water to push over the blades. This makes perfect. And if you practice out in open water, your reversing technique and understand how your boat handles in prop walk conditions, then this knowledge can be applied in 
closer conditions.